Managing colors is an extremely important part of VJ. In this video, I'm gonna show you five effects that you can use for managing, controlling, manipulating colors inside Resolu. I use at least one of these effects in my show file, every show that I do. Some are a little more utilitarian, others get a little wild. Hopefully, one of these five is useful and interesting to you and you can start using it after this so let's hop in let's talk about our first color control effect colorize colorize changes the colors by changing the brightest parts to the color that you choose it's just darker shades of that color until black essentially it's taking a color and using multiply blend mode to apply it to the image I like to load up a palette of colors that I'm going to use in my show so I can quickly switch between colors that I know are going to be good in the show and match with the lighting. But you can get more creative with this effect by using palette mode. Palette mode creates more of like a gradient map effect uh, using the colors in the palette. From left to right is dark to light. So you can set up a little gradient map and apply it to your image. Think of it like Tritone or even Colorama in After Effects or the gradient map tool inside Photoshop. Hue Rotate is up next. Hue Rotate changes the color by rotating the hue value for all the colors in your clip. This shifts all the colors in your image around the color wheel relative to each other all at the same time. This means that blue will start blue here and as it rotates around, it will go through the rainbow until it comes back to blue. Green will start at green and go through. Yellow will start at yellow and go through, so on and so forth. Now, most VJs figure out pretty quickly how to automate this hue rotate parameter. And because they're stoned out of their minds, they just stare into the computer for the rest of the night, get hypnotized, and completely forget to try anything else. Whoa. Snap out of it. What else can we do? Let's move this hue scale slider down a little bit. By moving it down a little bit, we can restrict the amount of colors in our image from all of them down to a shorter range, which helps create like analogous color schemes. It's like red, orange, and yellow, or shades of blue and green. This can help have a little bit more control over the colors in our image but we could take it further. If we bring it pretty much all the way down, it will restrict the colors in our image to one. Doing this also means that our hue slider is more standardized. It doesn't matter what color is in the image. It is now clamped down to red at the beginning and end, and it goes through orange, yellow, green, blue, through the rainbow in order. This could be useful because now you have a really precise and standard scale for choosing colors. I like using hue saturation in this way because it keeps the light areas a little bit better than colorize because it's not multiplying on top of them. But as a drawback, it can't really be used for colorizing black and white content. So. Pros and cons, use the tool that's right for the job. Coming up next, add subtract. Add and subtract modifies colors by adding and subtracting from red, green, and blue. You can get something similar to the colorize effect by subtracting two of the channels and leaving one. So you can have red, green, or blue. Or you can just kind of color grade your footage with more subtle changes to the channels. Give it some tints and adjustments. And there's a lot of interesting combinations in between. I find this workflow a little bit clunky and not as precise. Maybe my idiot brain just doesn't work that way. Uh, but if you like it, go for it. It's useful for treating clips and making weird wacky color schemes so 
give it a shot. See what you discover. Number four on the list is invert RGB. Essentially what this effect is doing is taking a white solid and applying the difference blend mode. And then you can use these RGB sliders to change the color of that solid that's having the difference mode applied. And that'll create some interesting new colorful results. Really great simple use case is for flipping logos from black to white or for getting some really extreme color changes that are kind of like trippy, creepy, unsettling. Last on the list, we're going to talk about recolor. This one's a bit of a weird one. You've got a handful of preset palettes that you can swipe through and then you've got the floor and the ceiling which allows you to clamp in that range of colors that's being sort of gradient map applied to your image from either the top or the bottom. You can trim those off. Cycle phase, you can animate this or MIDI map it or something. That'll let you cycle through. You've got your luminance and you've got your color gradient and they're mapped to each other. Dark areas get this color, light areas get this color, everything in between. Cycle phase is going to shift those against each other. So now this color is mapped to gray and it kind of wraps around. Just fuck with the slider, see what happens. You can also use this cycle speed value. 0.5 in the middle is stationary and you can bring it up to cycle it one way and down to cycle it another way. It goes faster and faster. This can get real stroby, but it can also be kind of cool. Cycling through the colors like that has kind of a neat effect. So yeah, try it out. Combine it with some of these other colorized things so you have a little bit more control over the colors that are used and hopefully you can come up with something that looks nice. Those are my five. What are your favorite colorization, color related effects? Drop it in the comments below. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and of course, come back later for more videos. Thanks for watching. Peace.